What is popping, YouTube? So you're either 0 2, 1 1, or 2 0 heading into week three fantasy football. We are going to be telling you the must start, must hit wide receivers to help you achieve that next level win because even at any stage, you are still in it. So let's go. The first wide receiver you should be starting going into week three fantasy football is going to be Drizzy Drake going up against the Lions. And the Lions, for as much as there's been question marks around their whole defense, they've given up the third most fantasy points to wide receivers up to this point. And as we've seen with Drizzy Drake, first week put up a big solid dud as we were all a little bit worried about Drake London and last week bounces back and has a very solid fantasy week. So going into this week, we're starting to see the progress. A guy like Drizzy Drake does not just demand the amount of targets that he did his rookie season without then translating to a second season. So I'm excited for Drizzy Drake. We were all in on Drizzy Drake earlier this offseason. It's looking not as hot. It's looking kind of mellow. Right now, lukewarm is how I would define it. But we will be in on Drizzy Drake this week as he goes up against the Lions. The next must-start wide receiver is going to be Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers the reincarnation of Antonio Brown, rookie versus the Indianapolis Colts this week. The Indianapolis Colts have given up the most points to wide receivers, and especially with this matchup, with Anthony Richardson probably going to be in out. Like I said, I'm recording this on Thursday night, coming out on Friday, so there's a good chance that Anthony Richardson doesn't clear concussion protocols. This is going to be a pretty good high-scoring game for the Baltimore Ravens, where the Colts just aren't going to be able to keep up. I think this is a get-right track game for the Baltimore Ravens offense, because even in week one, Lamar Jackson struggled. Last week, it felt a little bit better, but it still didn't feel to the level that this offense had the potential that it has. I think Zay Flowers this week is a great stardom as they play against the Indianapolis Colts. We then move to our next start of the week, and it's going to be Jordan Addison. Now, I have Jordan Addison as my wide receiver 33. So depending on your depth at wide receiver, you might not actually be starting Jordan Addison. But each week, he has caught a touchdown pass, and he has absolutely saved your fantasy football team right now. He's as a top 15 wide receiver, and he's going up against the Chargers, and we think this is going to be a high-scoring game. Of course, Cam Akers just gets traded to the Vikings, but I believe that since this Minnesota Vikings offense has been absolutely struggling to run the ball. They're just going to continue to rely on the pass. And especially when you're playing against the Chargers, it's going to be a high scoring game with Justin Jefferson, with Keenan Allen, Mike Williams on the other side. I think Jordan Addison, if you need to play him, probably going to be boom or bust like it's been the last few weeks. And it's been pretty boom. If Jordan Addison catches another touchdown, has another solid fantasy football week, I don't know how I can have Jordan Addison as my wide receiver 33 this week. Maybe I need to go back and readjust those rankings because as I'm talking about it, I could see all the potential for us to be talking about Jordan Addison being a top 20 wide receiver next week. If we see it again this week. Like I said, with these rookie wide receivers, it's kind of finicky, but Jordan Addison have been absolutely balling as of late. So Jordan Addison is the next must start wide receiver for me here. My next must start wide receiver is going to be Tyler Lockett. While I do love some DK Metcalf, while I do love some JSN, Tyler Lockett, I, I haven't been as excited about all off season and then even in the early weeks, but last week, Tyler Lockett, super solid week finally caught that touchdown pass. And this week, especially as the Seattle Seahawks are going up against the Carolina Panthers, there's a good chance Bryce Young's injured. So Andy Dalton's going to be in there. Then that we do have to consider is he is going up against the Carolina Panthers. And up to this point, the Carolina Panthers have given up the third fewest fantasy points to wide receivers in the first two weeks. So you're selling to Mikhail. This doesn't sound like it's a great matchup. Well, if we look at who the Carolina Panthers have played, week one, they play against the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Falcons absolutely cannot get the passing attempt going. Then week two, they go up against the New Orleans Saints where Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, Michael Thomas got it going but really with their average, with how bad that first week was for Atlanta, it's really not that great of a passing defense. And so my, my opinion, Tyler Lockett is another great start this week. Moving on to my next start, we're going to be just talking about pretty much start any of these Jacksonville Jaguars weapons. They're going up against the Houston Texans who have given up the ninth most fancy points to wide receivers. So Calvin Ridley, you're in. Christian Kirk, you're in. Evan Ingram, you're in. And if you're in a super deep crunch and you need to throw in Zay Jones, sure, maybe throw in Zay Jones. I'm not that high because I think they're going to get up early and often. And so that's going to then lean itself to the rushing attack for the Jacksonville. Jacksonville Jaguars, but I'm super excited. I think what we saw out of Calvin Ridley in week one in that first half is what we're going to be seeing a lot more than what we saw last week. Christian Kirk's always been solid. And of course, Evan Ingram be starting any of these guys this week. It's brutal out there in the streets of the fantasy landscape with injuries. So start any of these Jacksonville Jaguars wide receivers. And then we're moving on to two more players that you need to be starting. You need to be starting Amari Cooper and you need to be starting Elijah Moore. The Browns are going up against the Tennessee Titans, fifth most fantasy points to wide receivers, which is great considering the fact that we now have Jerome Ford and Kareem hunt in the backfield we know that they're now going to be relying on the pass more than ever so be starting these browns wide receivers i don't think there's any reason that we can't see amari cooper like we said finishing in the top 20 this week i am rolling out amari cooper everywhere that i have him this week and especially when we look at the cleveland Browns snap counts for week two elijah moore got 67 percent of the snaps amari cooper only got 63 but both elijah moore and amari cooper both got nine targets absolutely dominant target share i think amari cooper definitely last week kind of having a little bit of injury they only really put him in the when they were going to be 
throwing the ball. I think this is going to be a great matchup for Mark Cooper, for Elijah Moore. Start those Browns wide receivers. Now we're talking about wide receivers, you should say. Hollywood Brown. He had an amazing game last week. A lot of people are back in on Hollywood Brown, getting feeling the juice, the electricity of when the ball is in his hands. But this week, playing against the Dallas Cowboys, who have given up the fewest fantasy points to wide receivers. Now, it just got announced today that Trevion Diggs did tear his ACL. So maybe, maybe this starts to make the Dallas cornerbacks a little less scary. But even still, with that front seven, with Josh Dobbs throwing the ball, I don't, I don't have a ton of faith in this Arizona Cardinals offense as a whole. I have James Conner as a sit. I also have Hollywood Brown as a sit. So Holly Brown is my first wide receiver that I would sit this week. My next wide receiver that I would sit is Traylon Burks. I know we saw the touchdown last week, made you a little bit excited seeing the potential that there is there, but still DeAndre Hopkins is the clear wide receiver one for the Tennessee Titans. They're going up against the Browns who have given up the second fewest face points to wide receivers with that elite level defensive line with the cornerback play of Ward. I don't think that's necessarily going to impact maybe Traylon Burks. I think that more impacts Ryan Tannehill, the ability to get the ball out. And if they can't get the ball out to Traylon Burks, if they don't have the time for Traylon Burks to get deep, I'm just worried that you're relying Lying on Traylon Burks having a huge play, and I just don't see that maybe happening this week. So I have Traylon Burks as another must sit. I'll give you some other must sit players this week. We got Jerry Judy versus the Dolphins. I would love to tell you to go start Jerry Judy. I need to see it a week before I actually throw him out in my lineups. I know he's projected a ton of points based on a lot of what happened at the end of last season. I need to see it. I need to see Russ Cook with Jerry Judy before I throw him in there. And then I'm also going to be sitting all the Patriots wide receivers as they go up against the New York Jets. The Jets defense is just super elite at this point. I know Mac Jones looked good. He's looking better. He's looking improved, but I don't necessarily think that's going to translate to absolute fantasy success for any of these Patriots wide receivers in week three fantasy football. So if this is your first time on the channel and you tuned in the whole time, appreciate you so much. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're continuing to grow and build the best fantasy football community on YouTube. Once you a part of it, tomorrow we will be dropping my wide receiver tiers so you can even dive a little bit further into who you're deciding for certain sits. So make sure you tune in tomorrow and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. <music>